Today, I'm gonna to show you how to actually make a good use out of character buffs in the Zone Zero. But first things first, what even is a character buff and how do you see it? So one way is to go to your Agents tab. You can see every character in the game here. Click on one of them, whether you have them or you don't. Go to Skills and then the far right gear and the second paragraph here. So additional ability. That's how you see the buff for the character themselves or for the whole team. The second way is when you're about to start a battle you can actually go to the top right hand corner, the little smiley face or straight face, and it'll actually show you what the buffs are in the team that you're playing. And this will show you whether your buffs are active or not. And you can see the yellow face, smiling face, is gonna show you that it's active. The kind of green straight face is, it's not active. For example, the Cunning Hairs. The Cunning Hairs factions, Billy, Nicole, Anby, and also Nekomata as well. But with this beginning crew, you see I have the three buffs on the top right hand corner. So that's good, right? Well, it depends on the character. So with Billy, he actually just buffs himself, no one else. And he is an attack character, so it makes sense. And B buffs herself as well, so he gets more energy. But when it comes to Nicole, Nicole buffs the entire team's ether damage. Now, if it was just buffing her, that'd be fine, but it buffs the whole party. That's a problem because Billy and Nicole don't do ether damage. So theoretically, it's kind of a waste because the only person getting the benefit from it is Nicole herself. So literally the entire team is just benefiting themselves. So just because you have a team that's all the same faction doesn't exactly mean you're gonna actually benefit from it when it comes to buffs. So for instance, let's take a look at someone like Sakaku. Sakaku actually gives the entire team ice damage percent by 20% for 22 seconds. The only other ice characters in the game are Lycone and Ellen Joe. Ellen Joe is limited S rank and Lycon is a standard character. So it's a good chance you probably don't have either of these two in the beginning. But going forward, that ice damage bonus will be meaningful. And to be fair to Nicole, ether damage will be too. But the only other character to do that right now is Yuen, which is not out yet. She'll be here the next banner. And FYI, just because a character is a support character, that doesn't mean that they're only ones that have team wide buffs. There are characters who have buffs that are very specific, like if an effect is on them or an element is on them, they'll take more damage from their whole team and they don't actually have to be support. Some are anomaly characters, some are stun characters. So once again, with Lycone, he's somebody who is a stun character, not a support, but technically you can kind of put him in that role, but there is a support role and he's a stun role. He increases the stun damage multiplier for enemies by 35%. So no matter if you switch off of him, they still have that stun multiplier increased. So what you're trying to do is you're trying to most likely have two characters from the same faction. So in this instance, if I have Ambi, I throw in Billy and that gives those two the Cunning Harris faction. Now I have two people on the same team in the same faction. And then I have Soldier 11 here who's just kind of solo. Or let's say you don't have a lot of characters from the same faction. What you can do is just have them be from the same element. So I can put Anton here. Anton and Ambi, they are both electric. So as long as it's the same attribute, which element, or it's the same faction. You don't always have to do this and it's not gonna matter too early on, but down the line, you'll want the buff if you can take it. So with this team, unfortunately, Soldier 11 has nothing going for her, but Anton does get a damage bump when he's in his burst mode and Ambi gets more energy. So Piper, when Piper has 20 or more stacks of power, all squad members get their damage increased by 18%. So once again, in order to achieve this, you need to either have the same attribute or faction. So if you do end up getting Lucy, an A rank character, Lucy and Piper Wheel are gonna be from Sons of Calidon. So that is one faction. And the other buff would be crit rate and crit damage for Lucy herself. But you're not going to get this unless you follow the previous prerequisites. So let's say you're in my shoes and the character that you got off the standard banner was Soldier 11. What I would do is I would take Soldier 11, I would take Piper, and you put Lucy here on the left hand side. What that would do is it would achieve all three buffs. Lucy would buff the whole team's damage by 18%. Soldier 11 would get her fire damage increase up to like 22%. And then Lucy would have her crit rate and crit damage increased. So you'd have a pretty stacked team because you're getting all three buffs. Remember, you don't all have to be from the same faction. 
someone just has to have the same attribute as another character. So Lucy and Piper Whale would be from the same faction, which would achieve their buffs, but Soldier 11 would get her buff because Lucy is the fire attribute. So you see how it works? Two characters from the same faction, and then two characters with at least the same attribute. That'll work. It may not be the case for your account in every situation, but I'd say for us Soldier 11 people, we kind of got the short end of the stick because uh, Soldier 11 has no one else in her faction. It's just her. So you want to actually take note of the characters and their teams, just so you can get an idea of who's going to work with who. So here's the ZZZ wiki here, and you can see Soldier 11 is from the Obel squad. There's no one else in this team. So if you're like me and you have Soldier 11, you kind of screwed when it comes to her faction because you're just literally waiting for more characters to release that can actually get played with her so you can get her buff easily. But for now, for Soldier 11, you would just look for other fire characters. That would be Kaleida, Lucy, or Ben. And I don't mean to undersell Nicole at all. It's just that you have to wait for the next banner for Juen. Juen or Juwan, she is gonna be the only other Aether character in the near future. So if you play her with Nicole and you like Nicole, absolutely you can use her and you don't have to actually pull for Juan if you want to but that's gonna actually give her a big bump in her damage because she gives you 25 percent it's a pretty big bump for either damage and you should know that a lot of attack oriented characters typically have a buff that buffs themselves so attack characters will not usually be the ones for supporting the whole team they'll usually kind of buff themselves up and stun characters anomaly characters and support characters have a good chance of having a team-wide buff. Anomaly would be someone like Grace, right? Where it's like DOT in a sense, and that'll last long and it'll actually be on the enemy. So switching the other characters will be fine. And in this game, there is kind of like a forced switch system. So you kind of like have to change to a different character, your chain attacks. So it does help when you have a team-wide buff. So it's not just so selfish of a buff for someone like Nekomata or someone like Soldier 11. Going forward, we do have a new character. So this is her right here. This is actually like our first drip market, if you will. Her name is Ching Yi, I wanna say. And supposedly sources say she's supposed to be electric and she will be on the section 16. Those are two things you wanna look into when you're thinking about pulling a character or getting a new one or building one. Is this gonna fit the team cap that you're playing? right section six electric she's actually voiced by a goaded voice actor i believe it's kura buckland to get yelled at yeah so that's gonna be cool next patch 1.1 but that is the current list we have right now it's the best we can work with if you do get more characters from standard banner once again look out for their faction look out for their element or their attribute to make sure you're actually getting that buff when you play and one more thing, I also think your Bang Boo counts too. So let's say your Bang Boo does electro damage, or no, let's say it does ice damage. Sakaku will actually be able to help you out there. Or if it's Nicole and she buffs ether damage, your Bang Boo will do more ether damage too. I believe, don't quote me on that one. But that's it. Hopefully in the future with more characters releasing, it'll be easier and like a more of a passive thing to worry about because you'll have so many different characters that having an attribute or the faction will just kind of come easy. But right now it's very early and I'm assuming people don't have that many characters yet. So now it's kind of more of a really got to pick and choose if you want the buff. If you do. Hope you guys enjoyed. If there's anything else you guys want me to know or you want me to actually make guides on. I really want to do guides in this game and stuff like that. So let me know if there's any questions in the comments you guys want to know about. And that'll be all from me. We'll catch you guys in the next one.